Hi folks, in this video, I'm gonna answer the very common question I get many times, which is, how do I undo a bank reconciliation in QuickBooks Online? Now, I'm in QuickBooks Online now. I'm gonna click on the gear menu on the top right, and then I'm gonna click on Reconcile. Now, once I click on Reconcile, I'm gonna choose the bank account that I want to reconcile, and I'm gonna notice that the beginning balance might not match my actual bank statement balance. So generally we look at the actual bank statement and we look at that beginning balance and that needs to match because if that doesn't match, you are not gonna be able to reconcile your bank account properly. Now I have a different video in my YouTube channel. I'll put it, the link in the description that explains how to fix bank reconciliation discrepancies, which is probably the reason why you wanna reconcile or undo the reconciliation in the first place. So if your issue is related to uh, reconciliation discrepancies, you might wanna check out that video first so you get some context in terms of some of the things you can fix without having to actually undo the reconciliation. However, let's say that your issue is not related to a reconciliation discrepancy. Let's say that you just picked the wrong reconciliation date and that's why you wanna undo it. Or maybe you know or consciously understand that you did it wrong and you wanna undo it anyway. Now the bad news is uh, standard users, QuickBooks users, do not have a button or a mechanism anywhere here to undo a bank reconciliation. Only accountants or accounting users can actually undo that reconciliation. So if you have an accountant attached to your QuickBooks file or you have an, a, a QuickBooks Pro Advisor that's advising you or helping you with your accounting, I would say the best, fastest way to do it is contact that person and have them undo the reconciliation for you. But let's say you don't have that at all or you can't reach that person or whatever, then there is a workaround, which is you need to create your own accountant account and invite yourself as the accountant, log in as the accountant and undo the reconciliation as the accountant in order to achieve this. So I'm gonna show you step-by-step step what that looks like. So the first step is let's create uh, an invitation for an accountant user. So I'm gonna click on the gear menu on the top right, and then I'm gonna click on manage users. And then you're gonna notice in the manage users sections, you're gonna see users, roles, and accounting firms. So what we need to do is we need to invite an accounting firm. So we're gonna click on accounting firm, and then down here it says an accountant can be uh, your best business partner, blah, 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 invite an accountant. So what you should do is you, have, you should have a different email address, different from your regular QuickBooks email address just to avoid any confusion and email that email address, the invitation as an accountant. So you enter that second email address that you're gonna use and you're gonna click on invite and actually create an accountant account with that invitation. So I'm in my email now and notice that it says, Hector's Consulting Business has invited you to be or to use QuickBooks Accountant. I'm gonna click on that email and then it says, Hector has invited you to access uh, the QuickBooks file as an accountant user. And you're gonna click here where it says accept invitation. But before you accept the invitation, again, remember we're creating a separate QuickBooks login and this is gonna create a whole bunch of confusion potentially. So if you already have an accountant attached, avoid all that confusion. I already mentioned this and get that accountant involved. That way you don't have to have two different logins, once as a regular user, once as an accountant. But we're following through with this example. Hopefully you're you're following step by step. So I'm gonna go back into QuickBooks and then I'm gonna log out. And I, I want to log out to avoid any confusion when, when creating a new account. So I'm gonna click here where it says uh, switch company and I'm just gonna click on sign out. So I'm gonna sign out completely. That way I'm not in uh, QuickBooks online. And the way you know whether you're logged in or not, you go to qbo.com intuit.com, press enter. And if it doesn't open the QuickBooks file right away, if it has a login screen, that means you're logged out. Good. So I'm completely logged out. I'm back in my email, that second email, secondary email that we need to use. And I'm gonna click here where it says accept invitation. So then it says, sign up for QuickBooks Online Accountant. You're creating a brand new account under that second email. So let me go ahead and fill that information out. Then you enter your security question and you click on create account. Then it says, enter your firm's name. And again, you are creating an account as an accounting firm, even though you're not an accountant, even though you're a regular user and you have two different logins to QuickBooks. And again, this could 
create some confusion if you're not an accountant, but this is the only possible workaround to be able to undo those reconciliations. So let's call this uh, Hector's Accounting Firm, okay? And my zip code, and click on Finish. So then it says Success. We have accepted the company's invitation and also simultaneously created a QuickBooks Accountant account. I want to click on continue. And we're currently logged in as an accountant. And the kind of the way you know you're logged in as an accountant is this is called Hector's accounting firm, not Hector's consulting business, which is a non-accountant account. And you see on the top right where it says accountant. So if you're logged in as an accountant, it will be very clear uh, that this is really meant for accounting professionals, not for end users and you see accountant up there. And again, I logged in under that different email address that I used to create the accountant account. So now that I'm logged in as an accountant, and this is really meant for accountants managing multiple QuickBooks files, they can, you can click on your client's file, which is Hector Consulting Business. You can click on that, and it'll open up sort of the profile. And then in here, I would click on Bookkeeping, and then I'm gonna click on the icon on the top right that, that says, uh, advanced plus simple start or essentials, whatever version of QuickBooks in, we'll, we'll click on that little link that's next to the QuickBooks logo. And that's now going to open your uh, company file inside the accountant login. Now all the functionality is pretty much about the same. There's a couple of extra things that accountants get when they logged in versus what you would get as an end user. But again, the way you'll know and avoid confusion is up, up here in the top left. It will say accountant. It will be very clear and obvious for you that you're logged in as an accountant. So let me click on the gear menu and then click on reconcile. So I'm going back to the same reconciliation screen and I'm going to select the account that I want to reconcile. Let's say this Chase 8, 5 account. And then it says here, this all looks the same. Last statement date, beginning balance. None of this has changed. However, if I actually click here where it says last statement date, I click on that link and you will see on this screen, here on the last reconciliation that you did, you're gonna see here where it says view report. You're gonna click on the little drop down menu that's in there and you're gonna click undo. Once you do that, you're effectively going to undo that reconciliation. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on undo and it says, are you sure you wanna do this? This has already been reconciled. Um, you're gonna undo your work, et cetera, et cetera. And at this point you would click uh, yes. So that undoes uh, one month if you clicked on undoing a, an older month, it would actually retroactively undo every single month right in front of it. So this will give you a list of all the months that you're potentially uh, undoing. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on undo one more time. So it's got a couple of verifications, then click okay. And then that um, reconciliation is completely uh, done. Notice that the only reconciliation that's still sitting there is the one for January, the month prior to that. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and log out as an accountant. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the top right here on that little icon and click on sign out. I'm gonna log out as an accountant and I'm gonna log in into my account as normal. And notice in the top right, it doesn't say accountant in the top. So I'm logged in back as a normal user. I'm gonna click on the gear menu on the top right. And then I'm gonna go back to reconcile and we're gonna notice that the account now shows that the last reconciliation date is January 31st a month prior. And then I wanna check to make sure that on that previous bank statement, that beginning balance matches. And I probably wanna keep undoing until I get to the last clean, fresh, matching reconciliation amount and then re-reconcile the months from there moving forward. So anyway, I hope this video was helpful, even though it's a little bit convoluted and potentially confusing. But unfortunately, as of the date of this video, there isn't a simple tool for end users to undo the reconciliation. So now you know the workaround. And again, if you have an accountant, a bookkeeper, a QuickBooks Pro Advisor connected to your account, leverage that person because uh, undoing things could cause more problems than, um, than the ones that you're trying to fix in the first place. Anyway, I'll see you on the next one.